Good Legend of Sherwood video game review. During the time of the Crusades, Richard Lionheart leaves England and, as the legend goes, thus leaves it open to his crooked brother Prince John and the Sheriff of Nottingham to go mad with increasing taxes on the poor peasants of the land. Fortunately, Robin Hood comes in to the rescue, and through guerrilla tactics, he, him and his merry band stop the evil Prince John just in time for the king to return, and along the way he steals the heart of Maid Marian. We all know the legend, and this is a bit of an interesting take on not the legend itself per se, but how to display it, so to speak. The game is essentially a bit of a clone, I won't say a cannibalized version, of the Commando series of games. A real-time strategy, real-time strategy gameplay with a bird's eye view, a small group of specialized soldiers under your control, with stealth being key, and basically the objective is to get rid of the outposts, the guards both the patrolling ones and the ones that are just standing guard in order to get to a certain area in the level and there accomplish a certain objective. Whereas Commandos often has sabotage or thievery as the objective, you know, the, your usual during wartime spy objectives. This one is focused on reclaiming the money stolen by taxes and various tasks such as you know rescuing people who've been wrongfully imprisoned. At times you have to get close enough to listen in on a pivotal conversation to figure out you know what is going on, who is involved with this plot against the land. I have to admit I was pretty surprised that this took a Commandos-esque approach. I could, you know, one could easily see this as an action game. You know, a swash, they're, they're, it's a swashbuckler, it's a classic swashbuckling story. The legend, but Stealth, it's an interesting choice, and all in all, perhaps a little too much of an odd one. The In the legend, there is plenty of direct fighting and, indeed, guerrilla tactics, but on the whole, it does seem a bit odd to have outright, you know, that much sneaking and, you know, stealthily getting through. But hey, if he had really existed, maybe that's what Robin and his Merry Men would have had to do. The game was released after the second Commandos game, and unfortunately it does not have all the features that Commandos 2 does have. Commandos 2 was a huge leap from the first game, which is also a great game. However, it does have some things that none of the Commandos games does, so let's start with that. Basically, unlike in Commandos, there's no real alarm system. This can lead to a bit of a blasé attitude towards the stealth, and it is one of the game's faults. But it does also more open it up to, again, action. 
Whereas in commandos, basically if you're discovered, you don't stand much of a chance. You, you could try to gun your way out of the situation, but that will still arouse attention. And if nothing else, even if you insist in the second game, you can complete it without stealth. But it won't be as much fun, and your grade at the end of the level is just going to be butchered. This game... Basically, you can fight pretty much anyone that you face. You don't have to knock anyone out without being seen, except for when it's you know, among your objectives. Usually, you can fight your way out of a situation with fencing. Pretty much everyone, I think actually every single character that comes under your control, and yes, this does include the famous ones, you know, Robin Hood, Little John, although you don't have the fight over, you know, the bridge toll, unfortunately, Friar Tuck, uh, somewhat redesigned Scarlet O'Hara, Will Scarlet, wrong franchise, he doesn't have his knives. I. I guess it's because you can't really fence with knives. He has a mace instead, and he can use a rock throwing device. Name escapes me at the moment. I'll get into the specifics. Basically, first and foremost, the fighting. You use your mouse for the fighting, and this is still all in the bird's eye view. If you click, left click, on your opponent, you will just strike at him. If you right click, it's, it's a bit of a toggle function, you will block. Note that not everything can be blocked. You can be knocked down, even if you're blocking, and then you'll be even more open for attack. If you left click on the ground, you will move there. You can, you know, sort of strafe around your opponent. If you draw a simple shape with the mouse left clicking, you will attack following that shape. As examples, basically if you draw a straight line, starting at yourself, heading towards the opponent, you will do a straight stab. If you draw a circle around yourself, your character will spin all the way around, attacking everything close enough. Do note that this will make your character dizzy. There's a balance feature that really helps make the fencing matches more even. You can't just go nuts with doing really advanced attacks. You're gonna get dizzy, and when you're dizzy, there there's going to be a couple of seconds for you to just, you know, gather your senses, or whatever the saying is, and, you know, really regain your balance. And during that time, again, open to attack. You cannot defend yourself when you're just barely standing up. Enemies can also, you know, sort of knock you out with specifically powerful attacks, even if you do block them. The enemies rise in difficulty as it goes, so as you get better at fencing, they also get tougher and you face more of them at a time. The fencing is a lot of fun and definitely the most unique thing about the game. I have not seen this exact implementation of such a thing in any other game. And it really does earn a spot as a game that you should check out if you like fencing, as I do, or if you like this kind of gameplay. Because as, although it is less about stealth than the Commando series, it can still be beneficial to be stealthy, and it can still be a lot of fun to sneak around the various places. The different characters, like in Commandos, have different 
abilities that you can use for various, you know, so you can, Robin can throw a bag of coins on the ground to distract guards, similar to cigarettes in the Commando series. Friar Tuck can put a um, flask of ale on the ground. Do note that he has to go all the way over and place it, and if an enemy spots that, and you can of course check their sight lines just like in Commandos, if an enemy spots that, he's gonna pick it up, he's gonna drink it, and he's gonna pass out. You can tie enemies up like in Commandos, and some characters, especially in certain levels, actually have weapons where you can be fencing against them and it will just knock them out, such as the stick that Little John always carries. John, Robin also sometimes carries it. Like in Commandos, you know, Commandos 2 really, it's good if you avoid killing anyone. The fewer people you kill, the more of the peasants will see you as only a good presence, and the more will actually join you. And this really does, you know, there is a notable, noticeable amount of people who will really join you, and, you know, all the help you can get is really much appreciated. Even if you don't allow anyone to die, if one of your characters dies in a level, you can use four-leaf clovers, lucky four-leaf clovers, to resurrect them. And you can you can collect up to ten of these clovers at a time, and then you can't carry any more. There is no inventory system, unlike Commandos 2, so if one of your characters finds something that he can't use, he can't pick it up and bring it to the other character. You have to actually bring that other character to that item, or you just won't be able to pick it up. And there is also a bit, there are not that many abilities for the various characters. Each character has three abilities, and these are a very, very different usefulness. Robin can, of course, also use his bow and arrow and this will, it basically functions as a sniper weapon. If your enemy already knows you're there, one single arrow will not kill them. And some enemies do require more, armored enemies, obviously. The the levels are basically divided into two groups, where Commandos has obviously a pretty vast number of areas to choose from simply because of how many different fronts the war was fought on. There's obviously a lot to choose from, with Robin Hood less so. Basically, there are two kinds of levels. There's a castle with the surrounding town, sometimes the surrounding town, and then there are the assaults on the caravans carrying, you know, money, you know, gathered from taxes that you have to assault. The second kind, briefly, basically at the start of the level, you will see the caravan be stopped by one of the traps that Robin and his merry men have set up. From there, the enemies will be stuck in, you know, there there will be guards, of course, and the tax collector himself will also be there. And there will be caches of money on the ground near the caravan. You have to knock out everyone, including the tax collector. He you know, he will even be carrying some money on his, you know, on himself, on his, whatever, and g gather all the money, or at least gather enough that, you know, you can complete it. Some levels will allow you to complete them slightly before you may want to, but 
you don't have to. You can just you know, stay in the level for a little longer if you want, or a lot longer. These levels, you will have a bunch of the Merry Men, either, you know, hidden under, you know, piles of leaves, you know, leaves from the trees, or just standing a little off, away from the guards. The guards will start patrolling and setting up outposts. And, you know, again, sneaking can be really good, so you don't have to face them all at once. That can be very difficult. It's... I should also say the fencing does allow for several of your characters to be engaged in combat at once. And it's not difficult to switch back and forth between them and make sure that they're at least holding their own. They might... you might be forced to focus on one particular character, but you can have the other ones, you know, defending or, you know, and you can even have them leave combat, although, you know, they may be pursued. And if they're surrounded, obviously they can't leave combat. That about does it for the assault levels. The other levels, it's the same handful of castles that you keep going to. They will vary based on the exact objectives, and, you know, if, if it's at night time or daytime, and what exactly is going on at the time. You know, if it's, you know, you have to stop Maid Marian's forced wedding, for example. You know, there'll be different amounts of guards, and different classes of guards. You even do have, do engage in a few major battles, sieges on castles, because you have to eventually reclaim these various castles in the name of King Richard. And the, the map shown in between levels will show what castles are currently under Richard's command and which are under John's. These battles... Again, it's a bit of a... It's a sign of this kind of conflict between the need of action in the game, especially considering the source material, and the more stealthy approach. My personal pet peeve with it is especially that you usually do have to kill people during them, which will harm your, you know, your overall... How, how people look at you and how many more men you will be able to gather. Now, as for getting more men for your cause, there are a handful of different classes, basically. There's a bit of a brute who's a lot like Little John. There's... There are various ones. There's at least one archer who, like Robin Hood, can use you know, bow and arrow. The best characters are definitely the actual, you know, the ones that you know from the legends. They have the greatest capacity, you know, carrying capacity and, you know, strength and such. Now, you can actually usually choose who you bring on the levels. That is also something quite different from commandos. And one could argue that it also makes it a tad strange that they did choose this exact approach to this kind of game. Because part of you know, the idea with Commandos was indeed, you know, these are the people that you have to make do with, or these are the people needed for this job. If you have to blow something up, you bring the demolitions guy, usually. With this it is a bit more just light and feels less tense. And I would say the greatest enjoyment again comes out of the fencing. 
about choosing the characters to bring, you will not be able to start a level unless specific characters that are needed for the level are present. Often Robin will be necessary. And there are a couple of other times. And especially sometimes a specific ability is needed. And, you know, you will have to bring someone who has that ability or you will not be able to start the level. You do sometimes get to choose which level you'll try next, if it'll be an assault or, you know, a rescue operation in the woods. I meant to mention those before. Or an assault on a castle, although, or, you know, a level with a castle. Although the levels with the castles are typically necessary for the plot. Another one worth mentioning is the archery competition, meant to lure Robin out. The castles are beautifully designed, and in general the level design is quite nice. It doesn't feel repetitive to be going to these several castles. There, there are 30 levels in this game, so with, I think, five or six castles, you're going to be visiting each more than once. And it just, it does not get boring. It's also just interesting to visit the same level again and be doing it in such a different way and be remembering the trouble you might have had with this or that area. I should perhaps also note, sometimes stuff is definitely necessary. You have to Sometimes you start outside of the castle that you're meant to get into, and if you just try rushing it, you will not get anywhere, and you will be pummeled with arrows. There are some very cinematic... ...occurrences in the game. For example, again, a bit of a iconic visual, you get to chop, using your sword, the rope that is holding the drawbridge, for example, to let your men in through that way. You know... The game also opens and ends with some really cool Matrix-esque fight scenes that set up and close off the story, respectively. Between the levels, you have a bunch of merry men that you're not going to be able to bring. That is something that I do think is quite nice that they kept this as how it was in Commandos, you know, the Commandos games. You cannot bring just everyone. You have to bring a small band, six or seven people, sometimes less. The Merry Men left behind, and this goes for everyone, including the, you know, the legendary characters. They can train, they can train archery if they have that ability, or fencing. They can produce extra material for use for the abilities, such as you know, nets for whoever can throw nets. These, you know, obviously trap a group of enemies. You know, they can make arrows. They can make purses for Robin to throw on the ground to distract. The... This does also... Especially if, if you keep your men alive, you will, and avoid killing anyone you don't absolutely have to, you will end up with a lot of merry men stuck, you know, in Sherwood Forest, which is where your base is. And when these are producing around the clock, unless you spend a lot, you know, it, it basically it enables you to use a lot of the material you have for the special abilities. And it does end up somewhat as with Commandos 2, being a bit too easy and just, you can just, you know, play around. You do, there, there's less challenge to it. 
because the abilities do tend to be, you know, the effective ones do tend to be quite powerful, and when you can just use them all the time, it does take a lot of the challenge away. The game has sort of boss enemies, and these are of course resolved mano a mano duels between this isn't really a spoiler, Robin, and someone involved with the plot. And this includes the final boss. And it's a lot of fun. It's something I found myself really looking forward to on, you know, the couple of playthroughs. All in all, the graphics are not as good by a long shot, as those of Commandos 2, although it does have quite nice design and good color scheme. If you play Commandos 2 before you play this, you might end up missing some of the features of that game and a lot of the polish of that game. I can imagine that this was in production while Commandos 2 was, and Commandos 2 just came out first, so, you know, they couldn't take... This feels like a slight upgrade on Commandos 1, but it is not comparable to Commandos 2, all in all. And at the end of the day, it is not really a strategy game as much as the Commando series is. And it is more of an action game than the Commando series is, even if you play it action style in Commandos 2. But it is a fun game if you like the gameplay and you like the legend, because it does stay very true to a lot of it. It rearranges a couple of things, but it actually does include most of the story. I think it's nice to see such a new telling of a story that we all know by heart, where it does not feel the need to change many, many things. Reimaginings can be good and interesting, definitely, and I do like the new Robin Hood movie as well, but it's not always necessary. Sometimes a story is just a good story and you don't have to change it, and this game quite clearly realized that. And I don't really know of any other, there might be, but I don't know of other Robin Hood games, and certainly not ones that stick this close to the story and feel this epic and really feel like you are going through the entire story, the entire legend of Robin Hood. Because you do genuinely start out just you, just Robin, and you have to rescue people and gain followers to your cause, and, you know, over time you gain a foothold for Richard the Lionheart, and you, you know, defeat the forces of John. It really feels like a struggle. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.